in solving questions here that are similar to the ones that you have on practice for unit 2 test, uh, you do want to be familiar with the basic rules for working with exponents. I have a 15 minute video posted on YouTube um, and I refer to this sheet in particular and uh, you want to be very familiar with these because I'm going to be using these rules as we move along. Um, this video is titled Exponents Review of Rules for Basic Operations. Okay, And now let's go ahead and get started with some of these and I'll zoom in a little bit. One more. Okay. So um, on this first one, they're just asking us to evaluate the expression. So we can look at the standard meaning or take a shortcut. Um, whenever you have an exponent, it applies to the very first thing it touches. So this 2 says that there are two sets of parentheses. And then whatever's inside is inside. Uh, we happen to know that there's a 1 7th inside each one. So I'm actually showing you the long road here. I guess I'll put my equal sign in. 1 7th times 1 7th would give you 1 49th. But if you just want to use the shortcut, since nothing within these parentheses is being added or subtracted, I'm allowed to just use the shortcut and basically send the 2 in. And this 2 is going to multiply each exponent. Okay, so um, what I would really have is 1 to the first power times 2, and that's sitting over. We have 7 to the first power times 2, but that was a rather long-winded way. Excuse me here. To say 1, one to one to the second power is simply one and 7 to the second power is 49. All right, so this is more the technical explanation of everything happening, but usually you just do a lot of this in your head. If the example had been slightly different, let's say, um, let's just say you're given 3 fifths all raised to the second power. Again, the meaning of this is still there's two sets of parentheses. But rather than go down the long road, just multiply exponents. The exponent on the 3 is a 1. The exponent on the 5 is a 1. So you end up with 3 squared over 5 squared, which is simply 9 over 25. OK, we have more examples coming up. Let's see, uh, number 5. Slide this all up. They, here they want us to just plug in x is negative 4. All right, so um, what I suggest is, especially when you're plugging in a negative exponent, you put parentheses, sorry, when you're plugging in a negative uh, value, value for the variable, uh, it's a good idea to put parentheses right where the variable is, and then bring everything else down. So we've got our 5 sitting here. Uh, Whatever is inside those parentheses is squared. This 2 is sitting on top. Okay, So I've rewritten this expression, and I just have parentheses where the variable x was sitting. They tell us that x equals negative 4. So I put a negative 4 inside the parentheses. And this really means the, the 2 is touching the parentheses here. The 2 is touching the parentheses. So you have two sets of parentheses. And we happen to know there's a negative 4 sitting in each one. 
So when we multiply them together, we get a positive 16. So that value is going to sit right underneath here. There's our 16. Whoops. Well, it's, again, with these fractions, maybe that's a little bit harder to read it that way. So instead of writing there, I think I'll get rid of this. I'm just trying to have it written in a way that's easy to follow. So um, we'll just do our equal sign. And we figured out that this 16, all right, is the result of negative 4 times negative 4. So I'm going to put our 16 right here. Having a tough time today. And let's see if we can make that a little more impressive. And then I'll just move everything over. All right, so here's our division bar, the 2 is sitting up top, and this is 5 times whatever the result is. So this is 5 times that 16, all right? Again, my uh, little arrow here got off the track. <laughs> That's my 16 sitting right there. All right, and then um, it appears maybe one or two more steps. Um, you actually could do some canceling here because all, all this is being multiplied. Uh, there's a common factor of 2 in the 2 and the 16. Um, I think I'm going to clean that up because it, it just it'll save me a little bit of work. All right. So um, 2 goes into 16 eight times. 2 goes into 2 once. And then we'll just see what's left standing. 1, 5 times 8 is 40. So that's what we end up with. All right, there's other ways to think about it and solve it, but that's how it occurred to me. All right, we'll move on to another one now. Uh, number 6. This might be getting a little cluttered for people. Okay, um, here they want us to use the product rule. All the exponents are positive. In general, I encourage you to get your exponents all positive before you work with them. Um, and remember, when you multiply, you add exponents. So what you have here is, I'll move this down a little. This is equal to a to the 2 plus 5 plus 7, which is simply a to the 14th, and that is your answer. Okay. If they had given you um, a negative exponent, let's see, let's say, uh, I'm going to make one up here. If you had x to the 5th times x to the negative 8 times x to the 10. I could add more, but this will get the point across. Usually I'm encouraging you to uh, not work with these negative exponents. Rewrite this expression so there's no negative exponents, which would mean writing it like this, x to the 5 times x to the 10, and this means take the reciprocal over x to the 8th and then clean it up from here. But if you understand that when you multiply you add exponents, maybe in this case it would make sense to just go ahead and say 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3. Negative 8, sorry, I better write this out instead of saying it. So what you really end up with is x to the 5 minus 8 plus 10. And that gives you x to the 7. Okay, you could get there this way. Notice if we had taken care of this, um, 8 would cancel. x to the 8 would cancel. You would only have x to the 2 left here. And then 5 and 2 would give you x to the 7. So either way, you're going to end up the same spot. But um, 
in general, I'm not going to work with those negative exponents. I'm going to get rid of them, but maybe in this case it was a good idea to just work with it. Okay, let's see what we're going to do next here. Number nine. Um, now we're going to be using the power rule. All right. So this three, let's see if I can get it in front of you. Okay. This exponent is going to multiply each exponent inside. And keep in mind, this number three has an exponent of one. It's just not written. But this three is going to multiply that exponent. So don't lose track of it. Okay. And um, I'm just going to show this kind of going into each exponent. And it's going to multiply. So we'll end up with... Maybe working sideways here, we have 3, 1 times 3 is 3, um, P, and then 3 times 3 is 9, okay, then the next one is V, darn it, off the screen there, sorry folks, um, 2 times 3 is 6, and then in the, I have to move this down to make room for my denominator, s to the 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, I'm perfectly happy with the answer in this form. Um, course compass or some test um, multiple choice questions might go ahead and calculate 3 to the third. That would be 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So this answer is sufficient, but you could also have 27. Now I used up that exponent, so instead of 3 to the 3rd, you just write your 27. But you'd still have p to the 9th, v to the 6th, over s to the 6th. Either of these answers is correct. And let's see what else. Uh, number 11 here. Um, using our shortcut, if uh, basically you have z, um, so these are like terms, I'm going to be able to just cancel exponents. You have the shortcut that I show is just cancel out all 9 on the bottom, subtract 9 from 10, and you're left with 1. So when you finish this, you just have z to the first power, but you don't have to write that. It's over a 1, but you don't need to write that either, so you just write a z. Sorry, we're a little crooked here. Um, let's move this up. And I want to give you one more example that's uh, similar to that. If you had, um, let's just say you had x to the third over x to the fourth. In this case, the smaller numbers on top, so you're going to cancel out all three of those x's. You'll subtract three from four and be left with one. So you'll have x in the denominator, and you can't have air up here. You have to put the one that's actually sitting there. Usually you don't have to write it, but in this case, um, when you canceled out each of these x's, there was actually a one times a one times a one sitting there in its place. Um, but when you multiply by 1, nothing happens. That's why we usually don't even bother to write them. Okay, so x to the third over x to the fourth would yield that result. And let's see, number 13. Yeah, we've got time for this. Um, the 7 and the 42 will clean up just the way uh, fractions normally do. So 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into 42 six times. You have m to the 16 over m to the 17. So all 16 of these are gone. Subtract 16 from 17 and you're left with 1. And then when you get over to the ends, you have 7 here and you have 10 of them there. So all 7 of those cancel out. You subtract 7 from 10 and you're left with 3. And then let's just see what's left standing here. You've got a 6. 
Um, there's m to the first power, but you don't have to write that. n to the third power. And on the bottom, it's just ones, so usually we don't bother putting it over a one. It's um, inconsequential. Uh, number 15, anything to the zero power is a one. Okay, so the zero is touching the y, so this y to the zero power becomes one. All right, the negative four is just sitting there waiting to multiply the one, and negative four times one is negative four. Okay. Um, and let's see, uh, number 18 might have looked a little strange. So um, for number 18, I'll just write that out real quick. You could have something like x to the fifth times x. Um, in this case, you simply have to remember when you multiply, you add exponents, and there's an exponent of 1 sitting there. So x to the 5 plus 1 is x to the 6, okay?